Hi everyone, Julie here with Equip the Light, where we equip you with the knowledge of Jesus and His Word so that you can know Him and walk in the calling that He has for you. Today we're covering the recap for week 12 in the Jesus to Me Bible study in the Gospel of John in John chapter 7, when despite duress, Jesus offers living water to the people. Please subscribe, like, and share this video, and you can find the free Bible study worksheets at our website at equipthelight.com forward slash Jesus to me. Stay tuned to the end because you're gonna find out how we should respond to the dread we may feel about the future and this world. Coming up next. Remember when Jesus healed the man at the pool of Bethesda? Ever since then, the religious leaders had been seeking to kill him. Knowing this, for three years, Jesus ministered in Galilee and was unwilling to walk in Judea. The Feast of Booze was approaching and Jesus' brothers began to challenge him, saying, Leave here and go into Judea so that your disciples also may see your works which you are doing. For no one does anything in secret when he himself seeks to be known publicly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. And it says, For not even Jesus' brothers were believing in him. Jesus' brothers are really mocking Jesus and saying, If you're so great and can perform miracles, go show your works at this festival so that everyone can see them. And then if you do, then you'll really become famous. His brothers were practicing the way of the world, which is how they operated through opportunistic self-promotion. Blinded by their darkened hearts and unbelief, they misconstrued Jesus' motivation and believed Jesus was trying to bring glory to himself when in fact, Jesus was only trying to bring glory to God in everything he did. Jesus told them, my time is not yet here, but your time is always opportune. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it, that its deeds are evil. His brothers didn't understand Jesus' mission. They didn't understand what God was calling him to do. Jesus' main purpose in coming to earth was not to become some famous political leader or king that would gain popularity with slick words. Jesus' main purpose was to open people's eyes to understand that they were sinful and hopeless without him and in need of a savior. And then Jesus would become that savior by humbling himself to be like the silent lamb described in Isaiah 53, in which he would be led to the slaughter and take the punishment for our sins so that he could be offered as the one-time perfect atoning sacrifice that would bring reconciliation with God to those who believed in him. Jesus told his brothers, go up to the feast yourselves. I do not go up to this feast because my time has not yet fully come. So Jesus' family went up to the feast and Jesus stayed in Galilee. We know that Jesus didn't follow the crowd. He wasn't persuaded by public opinion or the pressure of persecution and the fact that people hated him and wanted him dead. Jesus sought his heavenly father and only wanted to please him and do his perfect will. At some point, Jesus changed his mind and went down to Jerusalem in secret. Maybe God told Jesus something like, you're right, your time has not yet come, so no one can touch you until it is your time. I will protect you, so go and do what I lead you to do. We don't know for sure, but we do know the Holy Spirit led Jesus to go right into the territory of those who wanted to kill him, and Jesus was obedient to the Lord's leading even if he didn't want to go. Now in Jerusalem, people were looking for Jesus. They were asking, where is he? There was a lot of grumbling among the crowds about Jesus, with some saying, he is a good man, and others saying, no, he leads people astray. No one spoke openly about him because they feared the religious leaders. Then, in the middle of the feast celebrations, Jesus went into the temple and began to teach the scriptures openly. People were astonished, saying, how did this man get such knowledge without formal education? Jesus didn't take any credit. He gave all the glory to God, telling them, My teaching is not mine, but he who sent me. If anyone is willing to do his will, he will know of the teaching, whether it is of God or whether I speak from myself. For those who are honestly trying to follow God's will, they will find out the truth of Jesus' teachings. Jesus said, He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory, meaning those speaking from their own authority seek their own glory. But he who is seeking the glory of the one who sent him, he is true and there is no unrighteousness in him. Then Jesus confronts the elephant in the room. He tells them that none of them have carried out the law of Moses themselves and yet they are trying to seek to kill him. The crowd answered, you have a demon, who seeks to kill you? 
Jesus answered them, I did one deed and you all are astonished. Yet even though you receive circumcision on the Sabbath in order not to break the law, are you angry with me because I made an entire man well on the Sabbath? Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. See, without God and knowledge of his word, the judgments and scales people use in this world are not just, but rather crooked, hypocritical, and full of deceit. People without God try to make themselves God. They make great efforts to look righteous according to the wisdom of this world in order to gain the approval of people. But behind closed doors, their motivations are twisted by sin and their methods, which are without God or knowledge of his word, bring destruction. The Bible says man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. People who surrender their lives to God no longer care what the world thinks. They have a reverent and loving fear of God to do and say as he directs. Because if they do the Lord's will and act according to God's righteous judgment as we find in scripture, then they will not be led astray by the world. For those who love God, their paths are straight and lit up by the truth of God and his word. So after this, people continued their gossip about Jesus. Some acknowledged that Jesus was the one that the religious leaders were seeking to kill. They noticed the leaders were not saying anything to him, reasoning that perhaps they had concluded that he is the Messiah. But they said, we know where he is from and no one will know where the Christ is from. Jesus cried out in the temple, you both know me and know where I am from and I have not come of myself. But he who sent me is true, whom you do not know. I know him because I am from him, and he sent me. People wanted to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him because his hour had not yet come. Many, however, believed in him and asked, When the Messiah comes, he will not perform more signs than this man, will he? The Pharisees overheard the crowd stating these things about Jesus, and the chief priests and the Pharisees sent officers to seize him. Jesus then said, For a little while longer I am with you, then I go to him who sent me. You will seek me and will not find me, and where I am you cannot come. The crowd didn't understand what Jesus meant by this, for he was speaking prophetically of eternal matters of his death and resurrection. But something in his words made them wonder and thirst for this place that he would be. On the last great day of the feast, Jesus no longer hiding, but filled with the boldness of the Holy Spirit, stood up and cried out to all, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Verse 39 explains that Jesus spoke of the Spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive, for the Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. After Jesus' resurrection, the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that filled Jesus when he walked the earth, was given to those who believed in him. It was the promise sealing their redemption and marking them as God's children. And we have that today as well. The crowd once again began to stir and to become divided. Some people said, surely he is the Messiah, and others, not knowing Jesus' birth story, that he actually was born in Bethlehem, said that Christ would come from David's village Bethlehem, not Galilee. Again, some people wanted to seize him, but no one touched him. The officers who had been sent to seize Jesus reported to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they were asked why they didn't seize Jesus. The officers answered, Never has a man spoken the way this man speaks. At this, the religious leaders wondered if any of the other rulers or other Pharisees had believed in him too. Nicodemus, the same Pharisee and ruler of the Jews that had visited Jesus under cover of night in John 3, spoke up and said, Our law does not judge or condemn a man unless it first hears from him and knows what he is doing, does it? They answered, You are not also from Galilee, are you? Search and see that no prophet arises out of Galilee. Nicodemus's understanding of the law diffused the situation and everyone went home without a hand being laid on Jesus because his time had not yet come. So what is the takeaway for us believers today? Despite all of the danger, opposition, and rejection that Jesus faced, Jesus trusted God that God would protect him if he went to the feast because God was in control and his time had not yet come. We can trust God and his word because he will never 
fail us. And while we may feel the dread that is coming into this world, we as his children do not need to dread the future. We have direct access to the throne room and storehouse of heaven. And when the dread comes, the Lord will open his heavenly door, his floodgates of provision that no man can shut, whether it's food, shelter, healing, or spiritual provision, whatever it may be. Our God is our source. He is abundant and promises to give us life abundantly. And just like Jesus stood on the last day of the feast, calling to all to come to him to receive the eternal rivers of living water, we as believers will also stand in this last hour and offer eternal life through Jesus so that they too can receive his rivers of living water. Make Jesus your focus. Feast on his word every day and never lose sight of the fact that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Remember that God is good to his children and he will work everything out for your good as you trust and follow him each day. Equip the Light wants to equip you with the knowledge of Jesus and his word so that you can know him and step into the calling that he's called you to. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button. Thanks everyone. Why can I not say that? Okay, Lord help me. Mm. Mm -mm -mm.